One must massage the mold. Welcome. Welcome. So we've made the plug, we've made the molds, and now we're gonna go make some carbon fiber parts. Um, we're gonna go over three ways of doing this, but the first one we're gonna do is gonna be the hardest one. Uh, for no reason, really. But. <coughs> Which one is that? Uh, vacuum infusion. Oh wow, that just sounds intimidating. So, so basically what you do, just a general overall, you prep it, prep the mold like you usually would, and then you lay your, all four layers of carbon fiber or have many layers of carbon fiber or fiberglass, or whatever you want, into your mold and all just dry, no resin at all. And you lay them all in there and then you lay a, uh, peel ply cloth on top of that, and then an infusion mesh layer stuff, which we'll go over all of this stuff, it sounds confusing. Just basically lay all your, um, your carbon fiber or whatever in dry, put a big bag over it, vacuum it down so it's super sucked into all the crevices of the mold. It'll give you a perfect mold finish, basically. I mean, a part finish off your mold. And then you'll have a vacuum port somewhere, and then you'll have another port into the part that you'll basically put into a cup of resin. Mm. It'll suck the resin throughout the whole part, give you a perfect, well, near perfect resin to uh, carbon ratio. So for today, we're just gonna start by laying all the stuff in here. Start with our uh, partle paste, like always, just wax right. on, wax off, Mr. Miyagi style. Three layers, wax it on real quick. Wait 30 seconds, wax it off. By the time you're waxing your entire part, by the, it's probably been 30 seconds. So go right back in, wax it off. Do that three times. It'll help cover any type of little imperfections and the small stuff in your mold too. Um, and then we'll go in with the same that same PVA. I was just about to use spray stuff. PVA stuff again. Yeah. But we do want to make sure that where we're we're gonna have to run uh, the vacuum bagging like tape or the gum tape, whatever they use. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to make sure that we don't spray that stuff onto like where the tape is actually going to attach to this. We want you that has a good seal, otherwise you'll get a vacuum leak. Stuff in there, so that would be good. Before we lay the PVA, I might just like run a tape line around here and then peel that off layer. But let's just get into it. Using a little bit of uh, wax and grease remover on the outside perimeter. So I can tape it off, spray the PVA around my tape line, but then when I pull the tape back off, I got a nice non waxy gel coat seal. Because if the tape then starts leaking, uh, it'll be a nightmare to just try and run around and find all the different uh, vacuum leaks and stuff like that. But so uh, let's go let this, this stuff dry real quick. Run some tape around it, then we can PVA, pull the tape up, lay the vacuum bagging tape down. It's like a special tape they use? Yeah. This is why I was saying when, while we're making the mold, you need to have a flange. If you had the edge of your part, you couldn't vacuum bag anything. So if the mold ended here, once the part's out, it'll all make sense. <laughs> Crazy, like, uh, getting into composites is really, um, it's really like addicting. Like you make one little part and you're like, oh, holy shit. I just made this carbon fiber part all by myself. Or my, this fiberglass part all by myself. And then you start doing it and then you just get really into it. And then it's like an addiction kind of. Like a big ass hobby. Yeah, and you're just like, I'm gonna try this type, this type of carbon fiber making or this type of mold making. And then, oh, I think I can make this complex part. And you just get more complex and then. Next thing you know. Next thing you know, you have a business. And a whole carbon fiber car. Yeah. But that's how I started Industry Garage. I was just bored making 
I made a set of flares for uh, my buddy Tyler, and then the, uh, from there, more people with S two thousands wanted them. So I was like, the Death Trap S two thousand from yeah. who? Who reviewed it yet? What that dude in blue or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, your boy leveled up from that the white regular man. Dust mask. I'm like Tim, y'all. <laughs> we matching. Fiberglass was like, hey X, you uh, you can't be wearing that. <laughs> and you're like, okay, <laughs> cool. So they sent him the mask. What you said? Damn, this thing is legit. I feel like I'm in PUBG right now. <laughs> I am your father. <laughs> this goes on this. Oh, in case you're like, but you're spraying this and there's like a yellow car. This stuff is water soluble, so as soon as you like spray any water on the car or whatever, it'll just wipe right off. It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. And we're live. Okay, so you can see where I untaped it. We have a nice, it's a nice uh, clean area for us to run our vacuum bagging tape on. Um, this PVA though is gonna take about 30 minutes-ish to dry. I'm gonna bump the heat on back here. 30 what again? 30 minutes? Minutes-ish. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that 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 time, uh, I'm gonna go get some coffee. <laughs> Cause I haven't had coffee today. I'm really tired, you guys. He's, he's pulling through. Pulling yeah. through with the water, but it's time for the caffeine. Bing, 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 bing. Come on. Oh. Little, little windy out here. Man, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna fit in here. Oh, what? Oh, you mean I'm in 2002? She lives. My kind, sir. <laughs> All right, will it keep running or will it just shut off? <laughs> ha ha! <laughs> Good job, Trudy. Love you. Right, so we got some more fiberglass boxes to open, but don't mind any of the noise. My dad's over there. We got too much space here, so we're just, you know, <laughs> renting more of it out. So this is the sealant tape. I don't know, it's like a mixture between like wax and tape almost. It's like it's like gum. Yellow gum. Yeah. This is what will hold the actual vacuum bag material down. If you ever have any questions about anything composites related or anything like that, uh, 
fiberglass actually has a like tech helpline, which we'll add down here. Again, they're not like sponsors or anything. We just really like them. <laughs> the, it's all about customer service. And when they treat you really nice, it makes you really want to represent them. Yeah, exactly. Like, and they treat we're not like really getting anything from this. It's just, we like them. But there's this lady, Michelle, that is like their tech girl, basically. And she knows everything. I have more. It doesn't smell. It doesn't like taste like tutti frutti. Oh, I ain't about to sit here and taste it. Pretty sure I'll get like sick or something. Do it, I dare you. Let me overlap these guys so it doesn't. I'm gonna have to go back through here and make like little pleats and stuff like that. I like this stuff just because of the color green. Yeah, I've seen different colors. Not really sure what the difference is and stuff like that, but I got the green stuff. I'm gonna leave the top of the tape still on here. And so what we're gonna do now is start um, cutting some carbon fiber. You can use like, if you get like construction paper or like poster board or something like that, you can really make a nice template and like lay it out, but I didn't think that far ahead, so. We're just gonna go ahead and cut some carbon fiber. Out. It won't pop. <laughs> mm. 3K, two by two, twill weave carbon fiber fabric. Five yard roll for anybody that's curious. I remember back in the day, way back when. So again, I'm using, I don't know if this is in focus, <laughs> using Super 77, um, just a light, light, light misting of it to keep this first layer um, aligned perfectly. I don't wanna make sure it doesn't wrinkle or do any weird stuff. Um, also this first layer, I'm going all the way across this middle but for the final layers, I'm just gonna be laying it only in the next three layers. I'm only gonna lay it in the actual flare sections. Um, that way I can, I don't have to waste carbon on the center here. But for the center, since I have to cut it so close, I don't wanna try to line one up and have one line over and then like the carbon kind of lap over and have like five layers on one. It looks like a mess, but. And this also makes it easier for when I pull the part out the center will come out too. But um, it's a little little misting of this stuff. It was a very long way. Try to not stir this fabric too much. Any little the guys you got hanging on the edge, you can just pull off. Yeah, because this, whatever sits down here is what you're gonna see first. All I need. Commercial strip. Dries quickly and clean. It's like 220 square feet. Is yeah, that how much it's good for? Yeah. Uh, it's like shit, everything's all hype and it just says 220 square feet. Okay. What are you telling me? It's not cool, bro. What do you mean? Shout out to Kid Dupree. Happy oh, yeah, shit. Birthday. It's your birthday. Yeah, we today, see. whatever date today is. March 23rd is when we filmed this. And everyone that's wondering, who the fuck is Kid Dupree? He's just one of our subscribers that's super active. Comments all the time, some random stuff. What on top? Dude, he's like <laughs> number one hype man for our channel, I feel like. He's always hype as hell. Every Dude, hell I don't video. know where Squidman been at lately. He oh yeah. The hype man. We met Squidman down H2O. You cool. Yeah. Squid man's the reason that there's a squid inside the trunk of the LS400. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I always laugh when uh, do Kid Dupree say Wada Ta because uh, Pootie Tang one of my favorite movies. So I was like, yo, I know exactly how he's saying this right now. <laughs> Hopefully that's the reference. If it's not, then I guess I'm way off. 
but I'm pretty sure it's pooty time. If you're wondering if he's right or not, look down in these comments because I'm sure Kid Dupree has commented on this video now. Because <laughs> he's always there. First five minutes of every video post, he's there. And we love you guys, so thank you. Yeah, we read all comments as y'all can see. When the best thing happened. Majority of the time, the very first few comments are always not pretty much be read because they're first. <laughs> You ain't first, you're last. It's a little snake. It's a slithery little snake. It's a little snake. <laughs> God, it was Evo's world. <laughs> um, so, we'll see how this works. So this is my idea. On the end where you basically let your resin in, you can run it to like a T fitting and have this stuff sitting right by where your resin enters. Resin will run through this channel really fast because this is sitting up and not vacuum bagged super tight. So my idea was have a T fitting down somewhere, maybe like here, right? Then run this stuff all the way around the outside and then have my vacuum right in the center. So it'll, the resin will come in, go all the way around and then all form towards the center. I don't care about the, anything in here. I just want to make sure these guys are perfect. Since it's a circle, it's not really, it's like, if it was like a square, I could start at one section and run it all the way up to the other side. But this is like, I need to have every corner of it perfect, so. <laughs> Will this guy even make it all the way around? I don't know. We shall see. You have to take the whole thing around, or is it? Um, yeah, I'll probably take it. Let's see where the center is. I just guessed. <laughs> Does it matter if it's spaced out or like if it's... Um, so you want it to be back away from your part at least because my part's going to start here. It'll just go to wherever your vacuum source is so it's not going to shoot out this way. It's going to go towards here. But with anything, like as soon as you do, uh, you start like one mold kind of like this, uh, more times you make a part out of the same mold, you'll get the rhythm of uh, how it all comes together. Yeah, like the easiest way to set it up and uh, the best way to like not use as many consumables and stuff like that. Which consumables are technically anything that you just can't reuse, I guess. Cool term from all the composites dudes on forums and stuff. <laughs> so the next layer is the peel ply, if I can open it. Good packaging. Can't open it, they packed it right. I'll probably have to cut a bunch of pleats into it, but you want to make sure this stuff sits very flat on the front. It almost feels like a really nice silk sheet. Feel this stuff, it's crazy. I might buy another one of these, use it as a little sheet of home. Mm, I need some scissors or some shit. 
They're not some shit. He just put them through a lot of work and miles. And so what you basically want to do is you want to make sure that your peel ply comes out farther than your carbon fiber. And then the uh, infusion layer guy, I can't think of what it is, the infusion mesh comes out even farther than that. Um, might have screwed myself with how far out this stuff is. Yeah, that'd be right. And if you're wondering what this is. Yeah. It looks so magical. I'm just gonna trim it around and then I'm gonna cut a bunch of pleats in it so it can conform when it gets vacuum bagged. It doesn't just sit there like a bridge across the whole thing. I am more sure as the bandito carbon fiber king. If you can avoid it, try to get away from having any wrinkles in the bag when you lay it down. Because of course, as soon as it wrinkles, it's gonna let air through. But um, what we'll probably need to do is add pleats where you add a little bit of this tape um, upward and then you run the vacuum bag around it. Basically makes a big fold so you can actually add some more. So if this was a flat sheet, it wouldn't be able to suck into all of the floor. Welcome to our pool. <laughs> Come on in, the water's fine. All right, so we have most of the vacuum bag um, taped down. Uh, the only, the last part that we have is to add in where we're actually gonna start vacuuming from. Um, I have these cheaper guys. These work great, but this quick disconnect thing is really nice for a good seal. Basically set this side under, and then this side has a little barb, I mean like a little bar across it. It'll push through and then seals real tight. So your vacuum bag will be in between this rubber guy. Creates a really good seal. And it's reusable, it's got little channels. But before I put this down, what I wanna do is that, that huge white roll of the bleeder ply stuff. I'm gonna set some of this down first. I have one little tiny opening here. Set some of this stuff in the center-ish where I'm gonna put that. Sealed. All right, so we have our bag all sealed and I attached all the lines. And so basically, this right here is a resin trap. What this guy does is uh, we'll pull vacuum on this whole thing and this whole thing will be pressurized, correct? And it'll be sucking through here, which this is clamped off, so it should just hold vacuum, that's the plan. So it'll start sucking through here and it'll suck resin into here. And then the resin will travel around the outside through this little coil thing we put on here. And then it'll all eventually slowly, because it'll slow down a lot as soon as it gets to the actual carbon. It'll come down here towards the center. And once it gets close, we'll shut, we'll clamp this. So not too much resin um, gets into the whole mold, but there'll still be some that comes out. And just in case it comes all the way up through the tube, you have a resin trap that basically the resin will drop down into here. And I have one of these cups inside here. You can also just wax the inside of this container and once the resin hardens, peel it out. Um, so the resin will drop down in here and then uh, I'll basically shut off this valve right here, close the whole system, and keep it pressurized while the whole thing's dry. Um, this little vacuum pump thing uh, I got from uh, fiberglass, basically they just, uh, 
They sell this as if you have a, a powerful enough air source, you can just run this instead of like an electronic pump or something like that. And we have like a huge room with a compressor, two compressors in it, and we are always at like 250 PSI, so we're good. But so what I'm gonna do is pull a first vacuum on it, check for leaks, uh, make sure that everything's laying correctly, um, make sure that these clamps are holding, and yeah, just do a preliminary check. And then once that is all, uh, once we've determined that that's all good, then we'll start mixing up resin, pour it in this cup. I tape this cup down so it doesn't move. Basically, we'll mix up resin in a separate cup and then pour it into this cup. Um, and we'll just make sure it never gets down low enough to suck up any air, because it'll introduce air into this, which you don't want, obviously. Okay, so we have um, our vacuum pulled. Everything's super tight on here. Everything's sitting really well. And the vacuum's been holding the same exact spot for, I don't know, a good couple minutes. So we'll let it chill for a little longer, make sure it doesn't have any leaks or anything like that. What we did was we just went around the whole thing, listened to the very edge and everywhere we had a pleat, we kind of added in a little bit of extra tape. But uh, it took a little while, but we got it all sealed up. All right, so uh, this, instead of actually weighing it, uh, you can actually just mix this in a ratio of four to one, four parts uh, infusion epoxy and one part uh, cure agent. So I want to mix a big cup because I don't really know how much this is going to take. Remember, this is a 40 minute pot life, so I got, I got a good bit of time for what I'm doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour this now into our cup that won't move. Right. Yeah, the hype of what was just happening. <laughs>